Continuing on with our positional rankings, today we're going to be looking at the top 25 outfielders. I know throughout these rankings, I've sort of been going position by position and ranking the top 10 players, but for outfield, I'd figured I'd just bunch them up and split it up to the top 25. And since we're going through 25 players today instead of 10, I'm going to be going through the players a bit more quickly than I usually would. I just don't want to make it a 30 minute video. So with that in mind, let's get right into the rankings. Starting off at number 25, I have Corbin Carroll of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Carroll is a former top prospect who made his debut last season as he played in 32 games in which he hit 260 to go along with four home runs, two stolen bases, an 830 OPS, and a 1.2 war. Defensively, I think he has a lot of potential. He's already one of the fastest players in the game, so he's going to be able to track a lot of fly balls out there, and all in all, I think he's going to be a very good player, and I have him coming in at number 25. At number 24, I have Anthony Santander of the Baltimore Orioles. Santander is one of the most underrated outfielders in baseball today. Last year, in 152 games, he hit 33 home runs. So quietly, he is a really good power hitter. I think he has the potential to hit 40 home runs, and he's not necessarily great defensively, but like I said, he has some really good pop. At number 23, I have Hunter Renfro of the Los Angeles Angels. Renfro last year across 125 games with the Brewers hit 255 to go along with 29 home runs and an 807 OPS. Similar to Santander, he has 30 to 40 home run potential, but he's going to give you much better defense. I think the Angels did a great job signing him. I think he's going to be a great source of power for them next year. At number 22, I have Teoscar Hernandez of the Seattle Mariners. Last year was a bit of a down year, as in 131 games, he only had 25 home runs, but in 2021, he had 33 home runs and drove in 117 runs. And if he plays a full season, I think he's fully capable of repeating that 2021 success in a pretty solid Seattle offense. Hernandez was a great pickup by Seattle, and I have him coming in at number 22. At number 21, I have Randy Arozarena of the Tampa Bay Rays. Last year, Arozarena very quietly put up 20 home runs and 32 stolen bases. Now defensively, he's not necessarily great, but if you're able to put up 20 home runs and 30 stolen bases, you're going to be very valuable regardless of your defense. At number 20, I have Ian Happ of the Chicago Cubs. Happ last year played in 158 games where he put up 17 home runs, 9 stolen bases, a 4.4 war, and 14 defensive runs saved. He gives you gold glove defense in the outfield and can put up 20 home runs and steal double digit bases and I think he's one of the most valuable outfielders in baseball today. At number 19 I have Adolis Garcia of the Texas Rangers. Garcia is super underrated. Last year in 156 games he put up 27 home runs, 100 plus runs driven in, and 25 stolen bases. On top of that he also had 4 defensive runs saved so in my opinion he's sort of like Randy Arozarena but with good defense. At number 18, I have Kyle Schwarber of the Philadelphia Phillies. Schwarber last year in 155 games hit 218, but he had 46 home runs and 10 stolen bases. Defensively, he's one of the worst in baseball, but if you're hitting 46 home runs, you're going to have a lot of value attached to your name. At number 17, I have Brandon Nimmo of the New York Mets. Last year in 151 games, Nimmo hit 274 to go along with 16 home runs and a 5.1 war. Defensively, he's not the best, but he's also not very bad, and with how valuable he is to the Mets offense, I definitely think he cracks the top 20 in terms of outfielders. At number 16, I have Dalton Varsho of the Toronto Blue Jays. Last year, Varsho was ridiculously good. In 151 games, he had 27 home runs, 16 stolen bases, a 4.9 war, and 16 defensive runs saved. All around, he was one of the most valuable outfielders in baseball. I just can't put him too high because last year was really the only season he put up this type of production. At number 15, I have Brian Reynolds of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Reynolds last year took a step down from his MVP caliber campaign in 2021. In 145 games, he had 27 home runs, but also had negative 14 defensive runs saved. But with how good he was in 2021, I have hope that he's going to bounce back next season. At number 14, I have Starling Marte of the New York Mets. Marte has been consistently great throughout his career. He's going to hit around 300, give you double-digit home runs and stolen bases, all while giving you great defense. He is starting to creep up towards his mid-30s, but even over the past couple years, he's been very productive, so I have reason to believe he's going to continue to play very well going forward. At number 13, I have George Springer of the Toronto Blue Jays. Springer dealt with numerous injuries last year, but he's still a very good outfielder. He's going to give you a pretty good average, has the potential to hit 30 home runs and steal 10 to 15 bases, and he's also not so bad defensively. At number 12, I have Stephen Kwan of the Cleveland Guardians. Kwan was really good in his rookie season last year, as in 147 games he hit 298 to go along with 6 home runs, 19 stolen bases, a 5.5 war, and 15 defensive runs saved. He won a gold glove and finished third in the AL Rookie of the Year voting. He's just a really good player who's going to do everything but hit home runs. 
At number 11, I have Cedric Mullins of the Baltimore Orioles. Mullins is the type of player who's going to give you a decent amount of home runs, steal a lot of bases, and give you great defense in the outfield. He's been one of the best outfielders for two seasons now, and I think he's going to continue to play very well for Baltimore. At number 10, I have Luis Robert of the Chicago White Sox. Robert hasn't played a full season up to this point, so you may be thinking that this is a bit high for him. But if he stays healthy, he has 30 home run, 30 stolen base potential, all while giving you great average and also some gold glove defense. Robert is a really good player, he just needs to stay healthy at this point. At number 9, I have Byron Buxton of the Minnesota Twins. At this point, it's pretty clear if Buxton stays healthy for a full season, he is a legitimate MVP candidate. He has 40 home run potential, all while giving you some of the best defense in baseball out in center field. He's all around a great player, and I have him coming in at number 9. At number 8, I have Michael Harris of the Atlanta Braves. Last year in his rookie season, Harris was ridiculously good. In only 114 games, he hit 297 to go along with 19 home runs, 20 stolen bases, a 5.3 war, and 8 defensive runs saved. He's a 5-tool player, he does everything for you, and if he continues to play like he did this past season, he's going to be one of the best outfielders for a very long time. At number 7, I have Kyle Tucker of the Houston Astros. Tucker last year in 150 games hit 257 to go along with 30 home runs, 25 stolen bases, a 5.2 war, and 14 defensive runs saved. He gives you gold glove defense, has the potential to hit 30 home runs and steal 30 bases. He's just all around a stud. Getting on to number 6, I have Julio Rodriguez of the Seattle Mariners. Rodriguez last year put up one of the best rookie seasons in recent memory as in 132 games he hit 284 to go along with 28 home runs, 25 stolen bases, a 6.2 war, and 3 defensive runs saved. This guy is unbelievably talented, he's a great player, and I think he has the potential one day to be the face of baseball. At number 5, I have Ronald Acuna of the Atlanta Braves. Acuna, for his standards, had a down year last season, as in 119 games he had 15 home runs to go along with 29 stolen bases. He's going to bounce back next year and remind everyone of just how good he still is. I think he may go for 40 home runs and 40 stolen bases and put up MVP numbers. At number 4, I have Juan Soto of the San Diego Padres. Soto, similar to Acuna, had a down year last season as in 153 games he only hit 242 to go along with 27 home runs, an 853 OPS, and a 5.6 war. But I think he's also going to bounce back and put up MVP caliber numbers next year, especially with Fernando Tatis Jr. back in the lineup. Soto is the definition of a superstar outfielder who has Hall of Fame potential. At number 3, I have Mookie Betts of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Betts put together a great season last year as in 142 games he hit 269 to go along with 35 home runs, 12 stolen bases, and a 6.4 war. He also continues to play gold glove caliber defense in right field as he had 15 defensive runs saved. Betts is a top player in baseball today and I have him coming in at number 3. At number 2, I have Aaron Judge of the New York Yankees. Last year, Judge put up one of the best seasons of all time as in 157 games he hit 311 to go along with 62 home runs, 131 runs driven in, 16 stolen bases, an 11-11 OPS, and a 10.6 war. He may not replicate his 2021 numbers, but I still think he's going to put up MVP caliber numbers, and he has earned the number two spot. And finally, at number one, I have Mike Trout of the Los Angeles Angels. As good as Aaron Judge was last season, I still could not dethrone Trout. Last year, in only 119 games, Trout hit 283 to go along with 40 home runs, a 999 OPS, and a 6.3 war. I get that he's not the best defender in the world, but with how consistently great this guy has been throughout his career, I just couldn't put him anywhere but number one. Alright, so that's going to wrap today's video up. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you again so much for watching and continuing to support, and I'll see you next time.